Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Today is Wednesday, and it is the 29th of March already, and this is the weekly commentariat. So let's take a look at the comments. We'll comment on the comments, and you, of course, can comment on the comments on the comments, all that you would. And if somebody wants to reply, well, that just gets going quite a bit. Okay, now I brought this little thing that I was given as a Christmas present many years ago. It looks like a lens, doesn't it? It's not, it's a timer. We set this to 20 minutes. We're gonna put it over here so we don't go so badly over time like we used to. All right, the first comment is from Andrew Parrish uh, from two hours ago. His comment is to the uh, Magloop video, but he says, hi Dave, I'm a subscriber and he wants to ask a question posting here um, only because it's your most recent video. Uh, I'm planning to put up an off-center fed 40 through 10 meter dipole at half wavelength height, which would be for 40 meters. The half wavelength height would be 66 feet. Are you sure you're gonna do that? That's pretty doggone high. I don't know if you can get that thing up there um, all the way. If you can, great. Now, uh, an excellent off-center fed uh, dipole is the MFJ 2010. It'll cover uh, 40, 20, 10, and 6. Um, Off-center fed dipoles are fine. What you need to understand about dipoles is that a dipole is a dipole is a dipole. Okay, so the how high you need it to have, the radiation pattern and all that is independent, largely, of the feed method. Uh, the popular way to feed them nowadays is N-fed. And the ARRL makes a nice little kit the, for under $100 to where you have all the fixings to make your own 40 through 10 uh, NFED dipole. That's a pretty cool project. I'm uh, building one and we're going to do some testing on it. So his question is, he has a long uh, feed line run of 160 feet from the station to the feed point. Um, Times LMR... 400 coax is a good choice. You could go for slightly cheaper for um, oh, RG213 or something like that, but um, the uh, ERP, effective radiated power, uh, is not affected by the fact that it's off-center fed. How you feed a dipole is irrelevant to the pattern and so on. It just affects where the dipole will tune. Um, and the LMR 400 uh, will be a good uh, coax for that run. Um, now that's expensive coax, you understand. And it's going to cost you more than the antenna costs you uh, to put that uh, antenna up there. If you buy LMR 400, it's not that cheap. Okay, um, Looking forward to the next Sunspot Max. Well, we're getting close now, so I'd go ahead and get on the air. He says he's coming back into radio. Used to work 20 meters in Guam, Japan, and so on. Uh, clearly in the military. Okay. So now let's see. The next comment is from Jim Nichols. The aluminum PVC tubing is commonly used for flexible compressed airline, Google Fast Pipe Airline. Okay. Well, you can. That'll give you the aluminum. <clears throat> but the problem with the aluminum uh, is if you're going to put it in a loop, you're going to need to have a bending machine to, to do that around like that. Uh, bending machines are not uncommon. You can go to a machine shop and get whatever kind of a distance loop that you may want if you're going to make a uh, mag loop. This one from Twilly. Ask yourself... If put in an emergency situation, you had the three digital modes, you have the three radios, you need to re deploy, reply to an operator, you need to just hand the operator radio to program right there on spot, which would you choose? I'd go with FM, forget the digital. Go with plain old fashioned FM. Look at uh, many of the radios today. Each of the big three, ICOM, Kenwood, and Yesu, plus Elenco, have kind of entry-level FM only radios that you can program right from the front panel. And some of the 
uh, Chinese radios are very good at programming from the front panel. Okay, so, um, you know, there's all different kinds of modes that you can use, but the fact is that DMR, um, D-Star, and uh, the Yesu System Fusion um, are all popular. We are not yet to a VHS beta type situation where beta came with a better product to the market late. And so their product was not sufficiently better to push um, VHS out of the way. And now we've got the three. Um, it's just not going to happen anytime soon. We've got these three. I mean, okay, Chevy, uh, Ford, um, Volkswagen. Three different car brands. How long have they been building cars? Close to 100 years? Why are we not down to one manufacturer? Because they're all good cars. And they meet different niches. And also, no one of them is sufficiently better than the others to push the others aside. Okay. Even uh, Hen Henry Ford with this uh, Model T, who ruled the roost for quite a while, was there were still other car makers who caught up to him. And it's the same way here. There's not going to be a winner. And I suspect there won't be one in my lifetime. Bob Hill uh, on the way off base meter designations versus frequency. As someone who is very new to ham radio, I want to thank you for making these videos. You are the best for actually explaining the why and how behind all things ham radio. It seems like a lot of people only give answers to questions, but don't explain anything else behind the answer. Well, it has been said that I'll never use 10 words where 25 will do. So, yeah, I do like to explain the background, and I tried to uh, in this presentation. I'm glad you liked it. Okay, in this uh, hamstick antenna for small backyard, Brett Chilcott. Chilcott. There's a chili cut. It's just Chilcott. Uh, Dave, thank you for sharing your knowledge to the ham radio community and doing so in a way that it is easy to understand. Keep up the good work. And best wishes from Brett C, A-C-0-A-E. Well, Brett, thank you very much. Uh, you're, you're very kind, I appreciate that. Uh, Duane, this is on the European loop. Uh, Duane, K-O-4-V-N-X. Um, great synopsis, very interesting book. Again, note that it's $9.99 on Amazon. It's a very thin book. You're not getting um, Moby Dick, you're getting something uh, pretty thin and to the point. He says he'll be grabbing a copy on Friday and studying up on that. Yeah, the Europeans are much more in the mag loops than we are. And they don't make just the classic single turn with a little feeder. They get multiple turns and they do fairly exotic things in there. Okay. Um, Europe is not a cent. Uh, let's see, this is on the mag loop from F4 IUJ, so France. Europe is not a single country with a central government like the USA. Um, I think a few people in Brussels might have a different point of view, but we'll take this as, as the fact that I see your point. Um, here in France, we have a law guaranteeing access to the airwaves. And it is illegal for anybody to stop you from erecting an antenna. Thus, U.S.-style HOA restrictions on antennas would be illegal. Well, <laughs> cool. I like that idea. I really do so. Uh, Sam Miller, due to the Tenth Amendment, the U.S. is not a single country with a simple top. Like you, every state is considered its own sovereign country. That is not true. Uh, there was a time when we used to say, these United States, and now it's the United States. It is a single country, legally, from the point of view of international law, and there is a central government, and it is true that many of the rights are reserved to the states. Uh, the states set most criminal law. 
uh, for local offenses. For example, if you're going to be tried for murder, it'll be in a state court. Um, unless there's some, something where the FBI might get involved, and they do just the national things. Uh, but of course, if you're being tried for espionage, that'd be in a federal court. Um, yeah, this is a far right uh, position. Uh, there are a lot of people who hold to that. I've heard it many times, but uh, it is technically not correct. We don't say these United States, we say the United States, single country. Now, why haven't we just switched to America? I don't know, because it's United States of America. There was a big uh, hoo when the United Nations was first organized, and countries would speak in alphabetical order. And a lot of people wanted America to be one of the A's. And the U.S. said, no, we want to be United States of America so we can speak last. You know, that's kind of the way they wanted to do it. That's got stuck for, for many years that way. F4IUJ, David was talking of Europe as it was a single at any, which it isn't. For a start, not all European countries are in the EU, and even countries within the EU tend to be pretty serious stuff like going to war without even asking permission. I know, and it, it's very, very difficult sometimes. The, there is no United States of Europe. Uh, there are a lot of people, remarkably among them the French, who wanted a more cohesive union. But what they came up with was the European Union and the uh, headquartered in Brussels and uh, in Belgium. When these people get together, there is a European Parliament and there are fairly strict limits on what they can do. The European Union and NATO are not the same thing. Um, the European Union and the Euro zone are not the same thing. Okay, they're, they're different from each other. It's a very different situation from what we have here. But there is freedom of travel. So if you're in France and you want to go to Czechoslovakia, have at it. There's nobody to tell you you can't do it. Uh, so they have freedom of travel. They have many of the countries have a single currency, the euro, which makes commerce very easy and so on. And the UK never became a Euro country. And now they've pulled out of the European Union, which has not worked out all that well. Okay, um, this is from Budi Sediwan. And he says, what happens if we use 75 ohm TV cable replacing 50 ohm cable? Well, first of all, understand that 75 ohm RG6 which you can get at Home Depot, Lowe's, or any do-it-yourself store, um, is received cable. It's not designed to handle a lot of power. Now, can you use it for something like a 100-watt radio? Probably. Note that your dipole, the impedance at the center of the dipole, could be anywhere from 30 to 70 ohms. So, can you not feed... 75 ohm cable to that? Yes, you can. Will you get a slightly higher SWR? Yes, but not notably higher. Can you use your rig's built-in tuner to tune out the difference? Yes, you can. Now, I've never played around with the 75 ohm cable, but I should, just to uh, double check that my assertions are correct. It will work. Don't try it on a thousand watts. You're going to burn it out. But it's also not all that fabulously shielded, but um, give it a try. Next time I'm down at Home Depot, I'll get 50 feet or so and see what we can do to get connectors on it. The connectors, standard connectors that we use in ham radio don't fit very well. So, And the F connectors are the ones that fit for uh, televisions. Uh, which are very different from the ham radio connectors. Uh, there might be adapters uh, in there somewhere. But yes, you can use it. Um, I use a loop in an apartment from Floating Lizard. I use a loop in an apartment, perfect solution. And yes, that can work very, very well for you. Donald Smith, I have a Nano VNA and have used it with much trouble. 
I think I will be able to use it better now after watching this. Well, thank you. And I want to pay a special thanks to Tom Freyricks. Fre 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 I always get his name wrong. And he's such a nice guy. He lives on the front range and he spent a lot of time with me showing me how to use it and it didn't take. Uh, what did take was two YouTubers, two Augies, both creating videos and sending them to me. And I went through it and I went, aha. Okay, I had the big aha moment. And so once I had that moment, I could explain it. And that video tells you how to use it for SWR only. It doesn't tell you how to use it for any of the many other things that that little uh, toy will give you. Okay, and there are a lot of scientists who use it. Uh, a lab-grade um, vector network analyzer will last, or will cost nearly $14,000. These are less than 100, sometimes substantially less. And the measurements that they make with them, they often make the measurements first with the nano VNA because it's so much easier for them. And then they'll verify them with the official vector network analyzer. Okay, I hope that video helped. Uh, we're back to the European mags. I have a homeowners association lording over my home. I know, this is a, a weird thing. It's not as bad as in European countries. I told you the story of when I was in Switzerland. Um, if somebody wanted to build a new house, they had to put up a bamboo outline of the house. I mean, literally erect it. So people could see what part of their views would be destroyed and all that. And the neighbors had to agree that you could build that house. Not like here at all. So I have a homeowner's association. So I have an MFJ 1788 hidden in the attic. It only goes down to 40 meters. True. Just bought the book. And I hope there is something in there that will get me on 160 meters. Yes, this is where the multi-turn loop comes in okay and if you you can build your own mega capacitor for that thing um i've seen one and they they are really something okay we'll see the only thing that i'm a little concerned about is building or coming up with the capacitor you can cut out the plates literally with tin snips pound them out so they're that's 20 minutes Okay, well, I guess it is. Okay, so um, have to come up with a capacitor for that um, and make that thing work. And, and I wish you the very best. So there we go. My goodness, that 20 minutes went quickly. So we'll try to do this again on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. Now, one thing I would like you to do for me in the comments, please tell me if you like these. These videos aren't getting all that many views. So um, do let me know. Also, if you would like to help support this channel financially, then please um, go to decastlercom support and find something there that works for you. Patreon seems to be best for most people. Until we next meet, 73.